All right, we're moving on to our second um, big idea. Um, and it's a little bit connected to the um, big idea we had before, um, where we are continuing to look at numbers and knowing what those numbers mean helps us to compare things and to solve problems. So this part of the big idea is what's important today. Um, our concept today is going to be estimation. Um, estimation strategies using in adding numbers today. And we're going to look at compatible numbers, compensation, and front end estimation. This is in Unit 2, Lesson 4. We're going to start by looking at the Connect section. All right, we have an Olympus, Olymp Olympic athlete, I guess. Uh, Lorianne Musner of Edmonton participated in the 2004 Athlete Athens Olympic Games. She won Canada's first ever gold medal in cycling. Lorianne was one of 11,090 athletes at the 2004 Athens Olympic Games. There were 10,651 athletes at the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. About how many athletes attended both Olympic Games? Now we want to take both of those and find out how many all together, how many athletes all together attended. And we know that an exact answer is not required because it says about how many. Whenever you see about how many, that means we really just need an estimate. We don't need an actual. Um, and estimating is a very important skill, so we need to focus on it. So you need to estimate when it says about how many. So we're going to estimate the sum or adding 11,090 with 10,651. The first strategy we're going to talk about is called front end rounding. Um, it is the strategy where we use the front digits only to estimate. So um, we add the first digits of the number, so 1, and then we fill the rest in with zeros, so it becomes 10,000, and 1, and we add the, fill the rest in with zeros. Again, 10,000 becomes 10,000 plus 10,000, which is 20. Um, we could also adjust just a little bit differently by using the first two digits. So 11,090 would just become 11,000 and 10,651 would still become 10,000 and our final answer then is 21,000. Using more of the front of the number, so a larger set of digits here, gets you closer to the exact number, closer to, oops, closer to the exact answer. So if you want to be more specific, you're going to use more digits up front here. Um, note, however, that front end rounding always gives you an underestimate because if we look at this, these two sets of digits, 11,090 and 11,000, well, we've rounded down. We've made our number smaller. So definitely our answer also has to be smaller. Here we've also made our number smaller. So our answer is definitely smaller. Same thing here. This number we've made smaller. This number we've made smaller. So there's no way our answer can be an overestimate or more um, in our estimate. It is an underestimate. Our number that we've got is lower than what the actual answer would be. That's what an underestimate is. Using those same numbers, we're going to look at a different strategy. This strategy is called compatible numbers. We use numbers that um, are compatible or easy to work with. Um, and that might be a little bit different for different people. So, for example, often we say multiples of 10 or something with zeros on the end, really, um, is easy to work with. So here they've taken um, 11... 1000 has stayed the same, but 90 is close to 100, so they've made it 11,100 um, instead, because that's still an easy number to work with. 10,651, they made 10,650, because that is an easier number to work with. 650 is an easier number to work with. 
and then they added those up and whenever you're adding you can always 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 write it out um, up and down so it's easier for you to work with and add it this way they just show it that way because it's easier in a textbook when you're typing to do it that way um, and that would be our answer when we look at compatible numbers it may give you an underestimate and it may give you an overestimate it depends on the numbers that you use so if we look here we have 11,090 and it went up to 11,100 so it went up 10 and we have 600, 10,651 which went down to 10,650 but it only went down by one so this one is actually an over estimate but it depends on is it more going up or is it more going down so that's how you would determine whether or not it's an underestimate or an overestimate see how much it went up and how much it went down alright in some situations you really do want an overestimate for example when you go shopping you always want to have an overestimate because then you know that you have more than enough money you don't want to underestimate and then get up to the cash register and realize no I don't have enough money because of course I've estimated the number to be smaller than it actually is so whenever we want to um, have an overestimate <coughs> um, we can use a different strategy for estimating when you are um, looking for an overestimate front-end rounding is not a good choice because you are automatically underestimating so make sure then in those situations you are using um, compensation is probably your best bet and just make sure that your number is always larger than your other than the actual number all right, we're going to do some practice now with front-end rounding. Um, we are going to use front-end rounding to estimate the sum of the data that we have here. Um, here is the data for five Summer Olympic Games. Here we have the number of athletes and which year those games took place. Just a little note here, when there are four digit and five digit numbers in a column, we line up the digits. Um, so the four digit numbers have spaces in between, and then we have the five digit numbers. It just makes them much easier to read, so good idea to always line up your digits. All right, if our question were about how many athletes were there in the five games altogether, and we're going to use front end rounding to find out, here's our total numbers, and we're going to round them. Um, to using just the front digit. So the first digit here was a 1, we add in the zeros, it becomes 10,000, the first digit here is a 1, we add in our zeros, it becomes 10,000, the first digit here is a 1, we add in our four zeros, it becomes 10,000, our first digit here is a 9, we add in our three zeros, it becomes 9,000, first digit here is an 8, three zeros becomes 8,000, and we would align those up, add them up, 47,000 is about how many athletes were at the five games and remember this is less than the actual number this is an underestimate because all of these numbers were less when we changed them something that students sometimes do that you cannot do is you cannot add all of these numbers up and then take your final answer and round it that is not estimating that is rounding when we are front end rounding we are rounding before we do any of the operations. If you're not rounding before you're doing the operations, you are not estimating. You must round first, then do the operations, the adding, the subtracting, the multiplying, or the dividing, for it to be an estimate. The last strategy we have to look at, or sorry, the next strategy that we have to look at is compensation, which is the last of the three. Yes, it is the last, because we did compatible numbers, so those are numbers that are easy to work with. We did front end estimation or front end rounding where we use the first digit and now we're going to look at compensation. Now with compensation we always round one up and then the next number down or one down and the next number up. Um, sometimes I like to look at the number and see what it's closer to to determine if my first one I'm going to round down or round up. So if we look at 11,090 it is closer to 11,000 so I'm going to round down because this one rounded down that means this one rounds up 10,651 then would be closer to 11,000 
which means my next one I have to round down. So 10,320 is closer to 10 or is close to 10,000. Next one I have to round up. 900, sorry, 9,956 is fairly close to 10,000. I'm going to round up to 10,000. Next one I have to round up or down because this is an odd number. Um, and 8,465 is closer to 8,000 than it is to 9,000. So I'm going to round to 8,000. Add all of those up. I would end up with 50,000. Note, when we estimate um, and use compensation, it is usually a closer value, closer to the exact value than otherwise. So this is a good strategy to use when you want a number that is really close to the actual number. All right, now we're going to do some practice. Some problems, as we've said, do not need to have an exact number. That's why we estimate. How do we know if $1,000 is going to be enough money to buy the TV and the DVD player? We have a TV at $799 and we have a DVD player at $169. We need to estimate to find out. Well, we're going to try all three strategies for this one. So we're, you need to make sure you try one with front end rounding, one with compensation. I better write those out, there's too close. And one with compatible numbers. Make sure you try one with each. Press pause and try it now. All right, let's take a look. First, I'm going to use front end rounding. And I have 799 and 169 front end rounding. My seven, fill in with zeros, plus 100, fill in those with zeros. 700 plus 100 is 800. So that would be my front end rounding answer. If I used um, compensation, one up, one down. Well, 799 is close to 800, so I'm going to go up for this one, 800. That means I have to round down for this one. 169, I'm going to make 160, that's pretty close, is 860. Gets us pretty close to the actual answer. <coughs> Last, we have compatible numbers. Uh, 799 plus 169. Well, 799 is very close to 800. That's an easy number to work with. 169 is very close to 170, and that's an easy number to work with. So I'm going to use that. Uh, 800 plus 170 is going to be 970. Oh, I just noticed a mistake. This should be 960. 100 plus 800, right? Um, now, when we are looking at this one, this one would be an overestimate because I went up and I went up. This one I went up one and I went down nine. So this would be an underestimate. This one's an overestimate. And this one we always know front end rounding is always, always, always an underestimate. So that's an underestimate there. So under, under, and over. To find out if I have enough money, this is my best strategy because I can know for sure that this is a higher than the actual cost. So when I walk up to that cash register, I know I have enough money. And yes, I could buy that um, TV and DVD player. All right, now we're going to do some practice. We're going to do some front end. We'll do these ones front end. We'll do these ones compensation, one up and one down. And we'll do these ones compatible numbers. Easy numbers to work with. So compatible numbers here. So press pause and try those now. All right, let's take a look at our front end. So 27 would just become 20. 36 would just become 30. 20 plus 30 is 50. Use my front numbers. Again, front end, I'm going to use my front numbers. 62 is going to become 60. 45 is going to become 40. I'll add those up. That's a 100. Perfect. All right, let's try another one. 
Um, these time, this time we're going to do these ones and we're going to use um, compensation one up one down. So we've got 391 and 542. 391 is pretty close to 400 so I'm going to go up with my first one. I'm going to make it 400. 542 I'm going to go down. I'm going to just make it 500 and 40. I could make it 500 if I wanted to. That would be fine. Uh, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 940 would be my answer. Now taking a look, is this an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, I went up 9 and I went down 2. So that would mean this is an overestimate. It is higher than my actual answer. Let's try 738 and 467. 738, hmm, I'm going to round that one down and I'm going to make it 730. 467, I'm going to round that one up. 67 is close to 70, I'm going to make it 470. Add those up, 0 and 0 is 0. 3 plus 7 is 10, which means I put a 0 and I um, put my 1 up at the top, so I'm carrying it. Uh, 1 plus 7 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 13. Now let's take a look. Is this an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, I went down 8 and I went up 3. So that means this is an underestimate. It is less than the actual answer. Oops, just noticed something. 8 plus 4 is 12, not 13. My apologies. 12,000 there. As you can see, it is very valuable to always go back and take a quick look at your answers, see if they're on the right track or not. All right, let's take a quick look at compatible numbers now. So we're looking at numbers that are easy to work with. We have 438, we have 360, oops, 64, 364. Really important to make sure you're copying those numbers down correctly. That's also a common mistake, as you can see. All right, 438, well, what's easy to work with? 440 is close, and that's easy to work with. 364, well, 360 is pretty easy to work with. So I'm going to change those to that. Add them up, 0 and 0 is 0. 4 plus 6 is 10, carry the 1. Uh, 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8, so 800. Now let's take a look if this is an overestimate or an underestimate. Well, this number went up to... This number went down 4, so that would mean there's more down than up, so it's an underestimate. Let's try the next one, 927 and 576. Now, maybe it's not as easy for you to work with numbers in the tens place, so maybe you're just going to go to the hundreds place. 927 is pretty close to 900. 576, well, that's closer to 600 than it is to 500, so I'm going to make that 600. Add those up, 0 and 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 9 plus 6 is 15, so 15,000 would be our answer. Now, this makes it easier as well to go um, under or overestimate. This number went down 27, this number went up. Um, all right, now, if it's not something easy for you to do in mental math, you could figure out the difference, say 600 minus 576, well, that's a difference of 24, so I went up 24, so I went more down than I did go up, so this is also an underestimate. And feel free to um, use your, your um, actual uh, um, subtraction there to help you out, 600 minus 576, if you need to, to figure that out. Do you remember, though, when you're doing that, you have to borrow from these zeros, um, uh, in order to make that work. Okay, uh, so make sure you're remembering to borrow. All right, so that is all three strategies for adding um, and estimating with addition. At this point, you are going to go on to doing the concept practice. Let me just get some of that out of the way. You are going to be working on page 52 and 53 numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. Make sure that you fully complete the question, all parts that it's asking for. Remember, you are estimating for addition. This will become homework, and we will be discussing it and marking it together. Remember, this practice is what helps you to get good at estimating with addition. 
If you have any questions along the way, make sure you look back at your concept practice section. Make sure that you um, ask your neighbor, and of course, you're welcome to ask myself. And lastly, after you've done your concept practice, remember you're going to do your exit slip. Your exit slip needs your name, sorry, it needs your name, it needs exit slip, it needs the concept estimating with addition. Um, this must be handed in once you're finished. It's my way to check and see, are you understanding estimating with addition? How's it going for you? Do I need to give you some extra help? Are there any questions that I can answer for you that I notice you're making mistakes about? All right, so if you've lost your paper copy, you're more than welcome to copy this down and answer the questions. Make sure that you number them as you see them on the page. Good luck.